Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be talking about the difference between concept mapping, concept formation and concept attainment. So if you're interested in finding a little bit more about these instructional strategies, then please keep on watching. Okay, so I've been asked lots of questions about different instructional strategies to focus on deep conceptual understanding. And I want to first of all start off by talking about inductive learning. So inductive learning is an approach which was developed many years ago by Hilda Tabber, and it involves uh, showing students explicit concrete examples and then asking them to generalize, looking at those examples. Now, concept formation is a type of inductive learning approach. So what is concept formation? Concept formation is when you give students lots of examples of a particular concept, and then they look at the characteristics and attributes and then come up and form their own understanding and their own explanation of that concept. So let me give you an example of a lesson that would use concept formation. Let's say that we were trying to help our students understand those concepts of democracy, genocide and revolution. And so basically this teacher would carefully select examples of democracy, genocide and revolution, lots of examples without telling students the definition of those three very important concepts. And then students would look at the characteristics and the similarities between those different examples and case studies. And then students are then asked to come up with their own explanations and definitions of those three based on those specific case studies and examples that the students have provided. Now, concept attainment is actually a form of concept formation. It is inductive. However, the difference is that in a concept attainment activity, you give examples and non-examples of a particular concept. So if we're looking at democracy again, examples of democracy and characteristics, and then we'd also give students ex non-examples of democracy and using the examples and non-examples, students then form their understanding and explanation of what democracy is. Now, a concept map is a diagram that illustrates the connections and the relationships between the different concepts. And so if I can use a mathematics example, let's say we had trigonometry in the center of a concept map, we would then ask students to start developing a concept map by adding different concepts and ideas that they've learned over the years or over the unit. Maybe in trigonometry, they might start off by looking at two branches. They might come up with a branch that's about right angle triangles and then another branch that's about non right angle triangles and then go from there and try to connect all the relationships between the different concepts. So that is the difference between concept formation, concept attainment and concept mapping. I hope you find these three different instructional strategies useful. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for joining me again this week, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.